One of the most common emails that I get from people is a, a distressed email saying, I lost my favorite hat. With the abundance of already existing materials that I don't want to feed into the chain by sourcing everything new, it also creates an interesting limitation where things end up being one of a kind. Um, you know, this necktie is never going to be found again exactly in that color. Faith hats were really born in around 2003. Um, it was a gift item, the first hat that I made, and then I made another one as a costume for myself. It didn't really catch on for the first year. I had, um, I had a few people see the hat that I had made for myself and the one as a gift, and that change just sort of repeated itself to the point where I had to acknowledge that there was demand for my product. Faith Hats and March 4th marching band were actually kind of um, developing at the same time. The space here where my studio is, the building's called The Egg, and the band practices here, my studio is here, and they've been growing side by side in the same physical building. So it seemed like a logical step to incorporate my hats into the more regular touring that we're doing. And I like being able to merge these two parts of my life, that it doesn't have to be go on tour and stop working and then come home to Portland and resume my business. It's a conscious product. People don't have to worry about exploitation of the environment or exploitation of labor, you know, that these factors are outside of the process, you know, that's made in this country, it's made by me, and I think people feel good about knowing that Faith Hats really does support community, it supports the environment, so by using clothing items, different clothing items for each hat style, it sort of challenges me of, you know, what what haven't I used yet? What's the next garment that I'm going to find um, that I'll start buying in mass <laughs> and stockpiling in my studio? <laughs> <laughs>